I'd like to make this video because it will help you with this week's homework. It may also help you with your lab depending on the design that you chose for your solution. So I want to just recap what we did and we'll alter what we already know to show that sometimes when you change the design you have to change your programming strategy. So we currently have this solution as using this checkbox as true-false. So here we want to convert this raw number to Celsius and now we want to convert it to Fahrenheit. Well, we didn't have to use a checkbox. We could have used something else. So let's pick up from our last week's homework and change this. Uh, I'm going to take a while. Let me just comment out this uh, box right now. So I'm going to do that with an HTML comment. There we go. And I'll just come in on this side right here. And we'll close that out there. Okay, I'm going to keep this label. What I'm going to do here is put a drop-down list instead. You know, we could have chosen a drop-down list for the user to uh, indicate their selection. So I'm going to make this ID equal cell um, choice, okay, or cell to Celsius. Okay, we'll keep it pretty close to the other wording. Okay, so there's our select tag. And then of course with select tags, they nest option tags that can have values. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put uh, uh, C for Celsius conversion. And I'm just gonna say to Celsius here. And I'll copy this option tag. And the other one will be F for Fahrenheit and we'll Put that in there. Okay, and I'll save my work. And we'll just take a look at the change here. Okay, so now let me just change the label because that's not going to make sense. Convert uh, choice, something like that. Okay, there we go. And it looks like that didn't save. There we go. Okay, so uh, we can now enter a temperature and indicate our conversion choice through a drop-down list instead. Now if we look at that, the design is working, but now we have to modify our programming code. Now one thing to note, select tags are very easy to work with in getting their value. It's no different than our number box here or a text box. It is single-valued the way we set it up, okay? Meaning it can only be this or that. So when I get the value of the drop-down list, it will be either C or F, and I don't need to do anything fancy. Okay, so here's what I mean. I'm going to grab this ID here. I'm going to go to my app.js, and uh, I'm going to replace the ID of the checkbox with this uh, drop-down list instead. Now, I don't need the checked attribute. There is no checked attribute of a drop-down list, but I can get its value. Okay, and just to show you again how that works, I'm going to comment out this alert right here, and then I'm going to comment out my formula. We'll leave that be, and I'm just going to do a little pop-up here to show you what we get with the drop-down choice. Okay, and we'll run this here, and uh, if I select to Celsius, I see I get C. If I select to Fahrenheit, I get F. Really, it's just the value that would be selected right there. Okay, so this is kind of nice. So we just have to change our code now. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to change this variable so it's readable, and I'll say convert choice. Okay, and now let's lift off our formula and follow how we have to change it. Okay, so now our variable is called convert choice. Okay, it will no longer be compared to true or false you know, it will be compared to the string C, right? Meaning, you know, and I have to do the uppercase to match the value here. If they choose C, right, then we're going to do the Celsius formula, right? And because it's either or, it will fall back to this if it's false. Uh, sorry, F, right? Because if convert choice is F, F does not compare equally to C, and so that will evaluate to false, so it'll, it'll flip to here, all right? And so now we'll put up our alert here. Okay, so I'm going to refresh this, and we'll actually work out our choices, okay? And there we have it working fine in the one direction and in the other.
Good. All right. Now, that's if we wanted to do a drop-down list. Now, I'm going to pause the video and make a radio button group, and we'll look at how we have to change our code then. All right, so now we've changed our design to allow the user to use a radio button group instead, one to Celsius, one to Fahrenheit. Now notice it's a mutually exclusive group. Only one can be checked at a time. And we went over this in last week's homework. Okay, now what did I do? I just went to W3 schools. I, you know, searched for W3 school radio button. And, you know, I just grabbed a couple with their labels and pasted and modified. So remember, you can do that to save yourself some hassle. Okay, let's come back to the HTML design and see how we set ourselves up here. Here is the key to having radio buttons work as a group. It's one of the inputs where we do need the name attribute here in this JavaScript uh, programming. See, it's the name attribute that forms the group. As long as they share the same name, they'll act as this mutually ex exclusive group. I've defaulted the, uh, c the Celsius option to checked. I kept the same values here that I had in the drop-down list, so we can evaluate them in the same way. Now here's where our programming changes significantly at an introductory level. You see, radio button groups are different than getting values from number boxes, text boxes, or drop-down lists like select tags. Reason being is, if you have a radio button group, you don't know which one is checked. So the challenge first is, find out which one the user checked. Once you find it, then you go get its value. Now, you can do that in programming code, and it's a whole lot of code, but if you use a different way of finding it, you'll see that it's actually pretty quick. Okay, so I'm going to change this. I'm not going to go by ID. With radio button groups, the recommendation is to use query selector, and you'll see this in my week two slides. So I'm going to refer to query selector instead. Okay, now query selector, what it's expecting is not an ID, not a, an attribute directly. Um, what it's looking for is a cascading style sheet selector. Okay, this may be new to some of you, but you will know this very well with Mark in your other course not too long from now. So I want to show you it. This will be something that will be a bit of memorization for now, but you will understand it better as your term goes on. Okay, here's what my selector would be. Because it's using CSS, I'm going to start with saying, oh, it's an input element. Okay, now if I just leave it at that, that's not going to help me because that's an input and here are two other ones, right? And then I got my buttons are input. So if I just say input, it's going to find all of them. But if I find something about both radio buttons that are the same, right, the name, I'm going to put that uh, inside my square brackets, and we call this an attribute selector. So I'm just going to say name equals rad convert choice, okay? We can just leave it like that. So it's input square brackets rad convert choice. That's the name. Okay, now what does this get us? At this point, this will find in the document both of the radio buttons because they both share the same name. All right. Well, we can add one more thing to this selector and go colon checked. Okay. That will find the checked radio button. Okay. But you can only do that using query selector method, not get element by ID or any of the get element uh, methods. Okay. Good. See, I can keep that there. Once this is used, it will find the checked radio button named rad convert choice. Once it finds it, it'll pull up the value. Isn't that nice? So now that we have that value in place, we don't need to change any of our code because the values were C or F and I've kept my variable intact. So let's save our work there. And we'll come back, type in our 32, and there we get our conversion the one direction and the conversion the other way. Okay. Good. So I'm going to leave this code here for you. Let me just ex give you your full view there. Uh, I'll upload this to Blackboard, keeping in my comment out stuff in my HTML so you can see all the different versions we had. And I'll leave this as our final little outcome so you have this for your notes.
Okay, hope this helps you in your lab. Hope this helps you in your homework. See you in class.